As mentioned in a previous lecture, the Adams attack has been used very effectively against the Najdorf. The Najdorf kind of nullifies a lot of White's plans in Sicilian. And so this really small, seemingly innocuous move that we'll see that starts out the so-called Adams attack, which is named after a master from like way back in the 1950s, it subtly undermines the, the E5 move in the Najdorf, and it just leads to a really comfortable attack from White that's very, very difficult for black to refute. And so this is a really good example of how a really small change in a position can make a big difference because it changes the move order or it gains a little bit of time or it changes the structure in a subtle way that ultimately changes the game. So it's very instructive for that reason. So we see the very normal first moves, put in the Nashgore, and this is the move right here, H3. It seems like a strange thing. And yes, it does keep the bishop and the knight from coming down here, but mostly what it's aimed at doing is counterattacking this position where you have e5 being played, which goes into the Najdorf and has the knight go back over to b3. And it's a slight improvement because now when black plays d5, they play immediately. Instead of going to b3, the knight can go to e2. It's not blocking anything in here because we're going to fianchetto the bishop and play g4. And so by playing h3, it allows this harmonious development of white's pieces into this new setup where you fianchetto the bishop here, you're going to play g4 with the pawn, and you're going to play knight g3. And you get all your pieces mobilized over here on the king side, and black can't really do much except to do its normal development. So if they just continue with normal Najdorf moves, like bishop to e7, white will play g4 and expand. And notice that white is now expanding pretty rapidly over here on the king side. It's good development. Even though he took a move to play h3, it allows for so much harmonious development afterwards that's worth it to take the time to play h3. Notice if you remember our Yugoslav attack and our English attack, we have to play f3 and then g4 and then h4. And it takes multiple moves. Well, now we're, we're doing, we're sort of killing two birds with one stone, this h3 move, and it leads to lots of other good things. In chess, we're always trying to save time. It's about moving your pieces efficiently. So every time you make a move, if you can do something that's both defensive and offensive, that's good. If you can do something that's both strategic in terms of prophylaxis, in terms of the positioning, and then leads to something else that you want to do with your other pieces later, that's good. We can't be thinking in terms of just one move. We can't even just be thinking in terms of, of tactics and looking for combinations. We need to always be thinking of how can we get the most out of each move that we make with our pieces. So H3 is that kind of a move. It's kind of hard to see if you just made that move by yourself. You wouldn't see the major benefit to it, but it's because it leads to this totally different position, basically. So we fianc out of the bishop. Let's say we play a b5 like normal. Now we castle kingside. And a good way to play against this h3 move against the Adams attack, Grand Masters have analyzed, is to fianc out of the bishop as well. And then if you get the opportunity to later, just trade these bishops off, and it can nullify that strong bishop and kind of weaken the king position a little bit. So this has been the favored way to play against it at the highest level, instead of putting your bishop on e6 like we saw before. So again, the natural is super flexible because you can put your bishop here and fianchetto it on d7. You can push it on, put it on e6. You can put your knight on d7. You can put your knight on b6. And each of those subtle differences has a really big difference on the position. And now this bishop is helping to defend the d5 square, putting pressure on the e4 square, and allowing for harmonious development of your pieces as well. So again, we have a strategic fight in the Najdorf that kind of gives both sides a lot of chances. But if you're a player who often comes up against the Sicilian and doesn't do well against or doesn't like playing against the Najdorf, especially because it's so effective, it's so solid, then playing the Adams can both surprise your opponent and allow for this nice attacking chance that you have. And most people won't be really familiar with what to do against this. They'll see the Yugoslav attack and English attack so often because they're so popular now. If you start getting up into higher levels of play, 
these types of variations will become more and more effective. So let's continue normally, bishop to e3, like we normally see, get our knight out, and now white can start an attack immediately if they want to. They can knock this pawn off, put this knight down to a not very good square, it's pretty much the only place it can go that makes any sense, and now white is already expanding and putting pressure on the king side. You can easily start moving his other pieces over in this direction, and you've got yourself a good attack going in the Najdor, which is known for being solid and not easily attacked. It doesn't have a Pianketo bishop position that allows for the Yugoslav attack and the castling on the opposite side. The reason that we play d5 is because it knocks that knight back and it puts our pawns in the center, right? We're usually fighting for the center. It allows us to have a solid position and then we can play b5 and we can expand the queen side and we get lots of good chances. But in the Adams attack, all of a sudden, the pawns come down really fast and the pieces come over to the king side really quickly and white is almost guaranteed to get some sort of pressure, some sort of attack going here against the black position. So it's a really good opening for surprise. It's a really good opening um, just if you don't like to play against the Nador, usually, you know, black kind of has to untangle here. He doesn't want to play d5. He could play this move b5 right away, and but the knight can now come down, and it's kind of annoying. So it's kind of tricky. We can play this knight, try to improve his knight, maybe expand and, and play d5 now, um, or maybe just rewrite, reroute the knight to e6, which probably would be a good thing to do. Um, it's tough for black to find a lot of good moves here, and so especially when you're playing blitz, putting your opponent in any position where they're on the back foot, where they're having to think a lot, or where they're unfamiliar with the position is a good strategic choice. So the Adams attack is a good strategic choice. Most people will be unfamiliar with it. They're used to the other openings. They have to take more time to think about the moves. They can more easily make a mistake. Meanwhile, your plan is very clear. You can just bring your pieces over. Look, you can bring the queen, even right now, all the way over here to h5 or h4, right across from the king. It's a very Dangerous. Notice his knight can come down, his pawns can, can come down, and um, black's pretty much going to be forced to play defense. He can't easily get his pieces over, depending on what he does. He's going to probably want to try to trade some, some pieces off here um, if he can. But in this case, notice it fails. He's got too many to lose material in this case. Actually, that would have worked out well if, we, if he were able to successfully do that. But white simply doesn't have to take. He can just let it, let it go there and continue to, to rapidly advance or attack. Okay. Actually, I like putting the queen here better because then black does this. We can just push these pawns. Just attack it there. Count that. Okay. So there's lots of calculating that you need to do. The goal of my course isn't to show you all the combinations and tactical variations. A computer can do that, right? and it's super complicated. The goal is to show you guys the patterns, the positions, and the typical setups, things that you want to be able to think about. You're going to have to do your own calculating um, in the game. But the Najdor, it's a very, very good weapon for black. It's more and more popular at the higher levels of the game because it nullifies a lot of white's most popular and dangerous attacks and gets a really good position. So playing h3 and going into this setup in the Adams attack can be very effective. So definitely go out there and try this in your games to see if you can't get some good wins with it.